Hello, my name is Damien Jones and I'm here today to give you a broad overview of the 150 odd cars we have coming up for sale on December the 9th at Chateau in the Droitwich Spa, Worcestershire. The undoubted star has to be the Bentley 4 and a quarter litre Gurney Nutting Pillarless Coupe. It is, we believe, one of just 11 such curvilinear coupes to have been designed by Mr McNeil at Gurney Nutting and is unique in terms of its preservation. It really is a very, very, very original car and that's been recognised by invitations to Concours held in association with Louis Vuitton and most recently the Concours in September this year at Chantilly. The car has, as far as we're aware, been repainted once, certainly retains its original upholstery, its matching numbers throughout, but what's really impressive about it is, as a pillarless design, the original body frame has stayed intact, and the doors open and close beautifully, all the original fixtures and fittings are there, and it just has been beautifully preserved. The current owner's had it since 1974, has a known ownership change since 1937, and it really is just an exquisite piece of 1930s design. Thereafter, we have a Jaguar XK150S 3.8 drop head. The 1950s were the golden era of Jaguar sports car racing. They won Le Mans five times. And in the 50s, admittedly only in 59, this was the very fastest Jaguar you could buy. It had the 3.8 litre double overhead cam engine with a straight port cylinder head, triple SU carburettors, 265 brake horsepower was quoted, 140 odd miles an hour. And this particular drop head coupe is one of just 69 3.8S drop heads made in right hand drive so very very rare again it's a matching numbers car has been repainted in the past but it's got its original upholstery really lovely fantastic late 50s early 60s Grand Tour. We also have from the estate of the late Jim Shelley who is a well regarded engineer and jazz musician a 1933 Lagonda 3 4.5 litre Tourer. That's a Lagonda 3 litre that's been up engine, been fitted with a larder, larger Meadows 4.5 litre straight 6. It's a tuned engine so the car's got an awful lot more horsepower. One of Jim Shelley's many hobbies was an aero modeler so he built the body using aero modeling techniques. So he'd had Alvis 1250s and Bentley 3 litres in the past, so it's got a slightly vintage feel to it, but it's a lovely car, something again he bought back in 1971, so coming from long-term ownership, and a great post-vintage thoroughbred. Also notable is a Mercedes-Benz 190 SL, really imported from the States earlier this year and treated to lots and lots of restoration, so very nicely repainted, retrimmed, it's got the factory hardtop, it's got the third optional seat in the back, mechanically gone through, it's on twin Webers now, but the, the original dual Solex has come with it, just a very lovely, very stylish car, obviously influenced by the bigger brother, the W198, but 190 SLs have a charm of their own and that one is lovely. Other cars we have, very rare cars, we've got a Spectre R42, that's one of just 23 ever made. It's the X Spectre demonstrator and it was um, subject to a profile in Classic and Sports Car magazine. And the Spectre R42 project was the brainchild of Ray Christopher. It was put into production by Anders Hildebrand and used very, very contemporary technology. So it's a 1998, well that car's 1998, it's a 1990s design with really Group C technology behind the chassis construction. It's got a Ford Cobra 4.6 litre quad cam V8 in there. It's got a Gatrag transaxle, so very quick car. They were supposed to be capable of 175 miles an hour and that particular one um, just coming to market with 22,000 miles on the clock, so lovely, lovely thing. There are a couple of one owner cars in the sale as well. So there's a Lancia Fulvia 1.3 Coupe that's had one lady owner from new. It was restored about seven years ago. Again, got the original interior to it, just a lovely thing. And then there's a Lotus Elan S4 SE fixed head coupe, which is just a fantastic thing. It looks scruffy, but it's had a galvanized chassis and all the running gear gone through by Mars Wilkins, who's an acknowledged Mark expert. And it's got all its original features on it. So it's got the correct type exhaust. It's got the small little boot handle um, latch at the back. It's got the correct speed wipers in it. It's got the little chrome hooks inside for the coats everything is is just correct on it and as an s4 built before the factory had the fire it's got much much better panel fit after the fire they were forced to use molds which weren't ideal so if you ever come across a land with bad panel fit that's because literally of that factory fire this was built before then so everything opens and closes beautifully uh, other highlights we've got uh, a number of porsches 
perhaps the, the most outlandish of which, which is the uh, Buchmann um, Turbo Targa, built at a time when the factory themselves weren't making a Targa version of the Turbo, but Buchmann got hold of this car, spent approximately 250,000 Deutschmarks in 1985, turning it into a complete one-off. There were two built to that design, one in right-hand drive, which is the car we're offering for sale, and one in left-hand drive. Our car was white, the other car was black, they were both at the 1986 Geneva Motor Show and uh, really quite extravagantly restyled so what Buchmann did was put a 959 nose on the car, sorry 959 tail on the car, 959 rear end but a 928 style pop-up headlamps and a sort of flat nose on it. Uh, completely wild and wacky digital dashboard, uh, bespoke sound system in there and this was a time in the mid 80s when people were doing that to, to Porsches and Ferraris. This was a time when Horatio Pagani was still working for Lamborghini, you know, so there were no Paganis out there to be had. There were no McLaren supercars. It was very much a market dominated by Porsche and Ferrari. In 85 Porsche released plans for the Group B 959 but you couldn't go out and buy one so Buchmann created this car with a 959 style tail, a bit like Koenig did with various Ferraris through the 80s. So fantastic period piece looks like it's just escaped from the set of Miami Vice really fun thing digital odometer okay it's not fitted by the factory but that's showing just under 11,000 miles that's credible that could well be the mileage covered from new and uh, a complete one-off and a wonderful wonderful time capsule we have two Aston Martins in the sale both of which are notable for their own reasons one is an Aston Martin DBS V8 it's a barn find or a garage find. It's one of only about 130 manual cars ever made. It's been in current family ownership since 1988. It's been subject to various degrees of restoration work over time, but the latest amount of restoration is stalled, so it will need quite a lot of work and recommissioning to get it back on the road. But a very rare thing, factory fitted air conditioning as well as the power steering, the manual transmission. So a desirable thing and the first of the V8s, the first of the William Towns designed cars to carry the V8 engine, so something that is going to be worth restoring and cherishing and owning into the future. And the other Aston is a DB7 Vantage. Uh, that's particularly interesting because it's one of the manual cars, quite a few of them sold were automatic. So you've got the 6 litre V12 in there, 420 horsepower, Ian Callum styling, great modern GT car, good service history with that particular example, only being sold to fund the Jaguar restoration project, so a lovely thing. But hopefully you will find things of interest in December the 9th and uh, if you're able to join us you'll be more than welcome. Thank you, bye bye.